specialty laboratories in Santa Monica. I was just an, a, a consultant there. And I came in about three days a month and we were working on that and at some point we needed to re up our, our grant from the NIH to work on that and I had to write it and so the first line of that was HIV is the probable cause of AIDS and I wrote that and then I said well I need a paper some kind of scientific paper to reference that statement because when you make a scientific a statement like that that's like a fact you need to say here's how come I know that right you put a little one if it's the first statement you've made, and then you put down at the bottom of the paper, you have a one, and you say, here's a paper by somebody that describes why that statement's true, right? And so I said, to, I said well, well, what's that? I don't even let me think about it. What is that paper? Who do I go to for that? And I looked around, I asked a couple of virologists at that company, and they said, no, you don't have to reference. I said, I have to reference that, because I, I don't know where that came from. How do I know that? And it turned out that nobody knew it. There wasn't a scientific reference, like a, a paper that somebody had submitted with like experimental data in it and like logical discussion and said, here's how come we know that HIV is the probable cause of AIDS. There was nothing out there like that. Nothing. Can you talk about your experience when you met Luke Montagnier for the first time and you questioned him about his... Well, get a reference for HIV since he is the one by the time I met Luke Montagnier, I had met a lot of AIDS researchers at meetings, and I had always gone up to them. If they, if they talked like they knew about H, HIV and AIDS, I always went up to them afterwards, and I said, where can I find a scientific reference that I can use for my... Remember I said I had a sentence there. It said HIV is the probable cause of AIDS, and I needed to have that backed up by something before I could write it and submit it. And I went around and I asked a whole lot of people. I said, well, the people, you know, I can't find it. I, at first I looked for it, you know, just in, in like computer searching kind of stuff like that. But then I said, there's got to be somebody that knows this. So you go to the experts and ask them. And so I asked all these people one after the other and none of them had it. None of them. And I was getting really freaked about that. That's when I first started saying, they don't know. Nobody really knows. This whole thing. It's a big sham. It's ridiculous. But then finally Montagnier came to a, there was a, a special little seminar down in San Diego where an old friend of Robert Gallo's, Flossie Wangstall, was opening up a Department of AIDS Research down in San Diego. They had big, lots of money involved, federal money. And they had Montagnier come there and give a talk. And after that, they had a little wine and cheese thing. And I went over to Montagnier afterwards and I said, uh, Dr. Montagnier, I, 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 have a, I can't find a uh, reference, like who, I can't find a reference to go with the statement HIV is the probable cause of AIDS, I, I'm sure you can help me. And he, he knew that he probably should be able to help me and he said, well why don't you quote this new work this, and by new, he meant like something that came out this year. Right? This new work about a, 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 a virus that can kill uh, monkeys. Or I think it was not monkeys, it was like uh, something related to monkeys, some kind of a baby, a little ape. And, and I had read that and I said that didn't, it was like supposedly going to be a model system for studying AIDS. If somebody had figured out some kind of retrovirus that passing it back and forth between various mammals, they could, prob they could finally put it into chimpanzees and kill them. And it killed them in about a week. And it didn't kill them in any, there was nothing like AIDS there. You know, it, it doesn't kill you in a week. It was just, just totally ridiculous. It, none of the symptoms were the same. And I said, I said, well, you know, I read that paper and I didn't, I didn't see any connection between that and AIDS, and I, and, I, and, I, and I don't think that would be a real, I wouldn't want to use that as a reference. And uh, I don't remember exactly what he said, but I know he walked away. Oh, no, before he told me about that paper, he said, why don't you use the NIH, like the, the CDC report? And I said, well, I looked at that, and that was not a scientific paper. And then he said, what about this other thing, this, this, this like paper that had just come out about a month before and, and it, a lot of fanfare associated with that paper, but it was total crap. It was like, yeah, if you get $2 million, you can figure out how to kill 
a primate with a retrovirus. So what? Doesn't have anything to do with AIDS. It didn't look like AIDS. It didn't smell like AIDS. It wasn't AIDS. It was just like got a retrovirus that can kill a chimpanzee. So what? So I, I didn't get any more out of him. He walked away after that. And the people standing around, by the way, who were his colleagues there, looked at him like they were thinking he should come up with a better answer than that. But he couldn't, and that's, he just turned around and walked away. I really thought he'd have an answer. I really did. I mean, that was my last... I was right at the edge of my, my faith in the system, but I thought Montagnier will know why he thinks HIV causes it, and he'll tell me. He'll say, because of this study. You know, but he didn't have that. None of those guys have that, and that's why they're so, they're so weird. You know? That's why they don't want to say... They don't want people like me walking up and asking them those kind of questions, and they're willing to like, go to great lengths to prevent that. They're out on a limb. I wouldn't want to be there with them.